No, no, no. I'm a Nepo baby. I'm not doing sex work. I'm a Nepo baby. Hello, everyone, and welcome to what I can only assume based on the title is another episode of Into the Shadows. Wait, what's the title? Kevin, who wrote this? The darkest things that have happened on Instagram. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it's, I, I mean, I get why I suggested this, because the kind of social media stuff works well on this channel, but oh, death. It's just going to be death, isn't it? It's just going to be death and abuse. <laughs> Kevin writes it, I read it, that's the format of the show, let's jump in. Wait a minute, Simon, you request this script for Brainblaze. Alright, then I guess this is just gonna be one of those episodes where the audience gets to delight in you being extremely uncomfortable, like when we get to the part about coprophilia. What the f is coprophilia? Do I want to- I don't want to know what coprophilia is. Is this today's coffee? It's- it's cold, but it could be from like an hour ago. It's not coffee. That's a waste cut. Um... I'm not sure. I think so. Good. I think so. Do you know who makes the greatest shoes that you'll ever wear? Yes! It is today's sponsor, Vessi. Vessi has sponsored me for two, maybe three years now, and since their sponsorship, I've basically worn nothing else. This is the Vessi Stormburst Low Top. They previously had the High Top, which uh, I wore a lot this spring, then these came along, and I've been enjoying these as well. Vessi makes shoes that are 100% waterproof, thanks to Dynatex technology, and, you know, it's summer now. It's pretty hot outside. Somehow, even though they make waterproof, proof shoes which are ideal you know unpredictable summer storms uh but your feet don't sweat at all like this is a substantial looking shoe like this is a proper shoe and uh even though it's waterproof thanks to dimatex no sweat at all fantastic look whatever you're up to this summer look good with a pair of vessies socks are dry with a pair of vessies and uh it's just the best shoes. Just, just, I don't know, two, three years, I've worn nothing else. I don't know what else to say. Just get yourself a pair of Vessies. I see people hitting me up on Twitter, or X, sorry, and uh, they're like, dude, I finally bought into the pressure from you of buying a pair of Vessies. No regrets. And I'm like, you're goddamn right, no regrets. So, all you need to do, go to vessi.com forward slash blaze, and you'll get an automatic 15% off your purchase at checkout. These are the only shoes you'll ever need. Get yourself a pair of Vessies. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now back to the show. And if you don't know offhand what that word means, don't look it up. It'll be a fun little surprise for you when we get there. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Kevin. Cop. Coprophilia. Corpse. It's not necrophilia, because that's to do with dead bodies. Coprophilia. It's going to be someone liking something. Cops. Maybe they just like cops, like the police. Anyway, by its very nature, Instagram is an incredibly dark place. Of course, that was never the intention. It was meant to just be a nice place where people could show off pictures of the food they were about to eat. <laughs> we live in a weird world. And probably other pictures as well, but mainly just food. In theory, Instagram should have been just a generic social media platform, but the emphasis on pictures certainly made it a little bit different. Instead of other sites where people are encouraged to communicate through the use of full sentences, Instagram was nothing but pictures and hashtags. It was a way for people to show off a highly fabricated a manufactured snapshot of their perfect life completely detached from any semblance of reality <laughs> yeah i just don't i don't use instagram i have an instagram i don't think i posted there in like five years it's just i, I don't know why i have it sometimes I, I i just don't use it i don't use it sometimes i'll go on i'll see if i've got any dms from people with blue check marks but that's about it this has proven to be extremely damaging to people's mental well-being especially the younger users of the platform they simply don't understand that everything they're seeing is staged and heavily photoshopped creating incredibly unrealistic expectations for beauty and wealth and whatnot all social media is bad in this regard but studies have found that instagram was by far the most psychologically damaging social media platform especially to children yeah i got children and i could see this like i'm a big boy like, I know it's all fake. I can wrap my head around that, but children are stupid. Like, they just don't have fully grown brains yet. And it's like, I can see my kids don't have fully grown brains. Of course you can. And they, they just believe all sorts of stupid shit. And even though they get a bit smarter, they're going to believe all this stupid shit in Instagram, which is going to make them all depressed and stuff, which isn't brilliant. In fact, it's, I'd say it's quite bad, actually. But spending the entire episode discussing the broader implications and dangers of platform like Instagram would just be depressing. So instead, we're going to focus on some very specific instances that are some of the darkest things that have ever happened on Instagram. Raw chicken experiment. Oh my god, please don't be eating raw chicken. It's not good. It's not sushi. Sashimi? What's the sushi? Like the fish on sushi. Sashimi. It's not going to be good. Don't do that with chicken. Since this is still technically a Brain Blaze episode, I'm going to start things off with something a little lighter for the sake of our engagement numbers. With that said, let's talk a little bit about the carnivore diet. Isn't that the thing that the, uh, the uh, Jordan Peterson was on? He was just eating meat? <laughs> Did it make him insane? <laughs> 
You gotta eat vegetables, dude. Come on. Simply put, the carnivore diet is stupid for exactly the same reason that being a vegetarian is stupid. Yeah, but at least, veg- like, the carnivore diet is like you don't even have the, the, the reasoning of it being an ethical thing. Because no one's like, oh no, salad. But I get why people are vegetarians for ethical reasons. You're not even eating a poor, helpless chicken. Or if they just don't like meat. But just eating meat is stupid. <laughs> Humans are anatomically omnivorous, and we benefit greatly from a diet consisting of both plants and animals. And really, the carnivore diet is actually worse than being a vegetarian. Getting all of your essential nutrients from a strict vegetarian diet is technically doable, but it is a massive pain in the ass that requires a lot more planning than most people put into it. <laughs> But attempting to get all your essential nutrients while only eating meat is downright impossible without the assistance of vitamin supplements. Unfortunately, many people engaging in the modern carnivore diet take things a whole lot farther than just cutting vegetables out of their diets. They also consume the meat raw. Lots of meat. Go hold on to that. This is what that insane dude was doing. The guy was actually insane. The liver king dude. He was like, this is how I get super ripped, bruh. <laughs> I just eat like raw liver from like cows and like sleep on a log. <laughs> And then it turns out he's taking loads of steroids. <laughs> ah! And just selling programs about eating meat when it was just f***ing steroids, bro. Jesus Christ, allegedly. Again, this is a stupid idea. Humans have been cooking food for hundreds of thousands of years, and with good reason. It is safer, it's easier to chew, it's easier to digest. That's not to say that humans are incapable of digesting raw meat, because of course we can. Our stomach acid is even strong enough to kill some amount of pathogens that could be found in food. But since that amount is dramatically lower than 100%, it's still not a great idea. Yes, your body is capable of fueling itself with raw meat, but doing so is just taking a needless health risk so so you can feel like a big boy. A big boy full of parasites. And even if you did decide to eat tons of raw meat for some reason, you should still mix a salad or some fruit into your diet once in a while to get all those vitamins that just aren't found in meat. Isn't the argument, like, I feel like if I said this to someone who was on a carnivore diet, well, they'd be like, well, dude, the reason I don't eat vegetables is because animals eat vegetables and all the nutrients just go into their flesh, which I then eat. So I guess some don't like pass through the food flesh barrier or whatever. And I mean, it's not like you're eating all of their body. You're not like chewing on their bones and shit. Oh, maybe you are, but you're not eating the bones. But hey, the things I'm saying are based solely on hundreds of years of science and hundreds of thousands of years of anecdotal evidence. Clearly, I'm just parroting the talking points that the global elite want you to believe so they can trick you into cooking your meat like a bunch of sheep. It's one of those things where it's like, but what is the agenda? So like, big electricity can sell more electricity to, to power your stove? Big gas? You double-deckered pig farts! And I know there are, these are like, nefar can be like nefarious industries and stuff who definitely want to sell you more electric and gas. But the amount that you use to cook your food is fucking tiny compared to like, heating your house and shit. That's right, I'm obviously in the pocket of big rotisserie. God, I love a rotisserie chicken. Oh, I think I'll have a rotisserie chicken tonight. That is the claim made by the Instagram account Raw Chicken Experiment, who coincidentally also sold shirts parodying the Costco wholesale logo with the words Big Rotisserie. This has got to be a parody account. Please, surely, please be a parody account. The account was made for one simple purpose, to perform a science experiment that would shake the very foundation of our understanding of nutrition. The parameters of the 100-day experiment, as put forth by the account's creator and only participant, were simple. He was going to eat raw chicken every day until he got a tummy ache. <laughs> These parameters are acceptable. It's like lunchtime, day one. Ah! ah! <laughs> Every day for 100 days, this man would eat a raw chicken breast, followed by drinking what looked to be about five dozen raw eggs. Surprisingly, he was a pretty small dude, whereas I'd have expected this diet to have left him roughly the size of a barge. Yeah, like, <laughs> eating that many eggs, dude, your cholesterol's gonna be cray-cray. So one of those egg council creeps got to you too, huh? You'd better run egg! Anyway, eventually our buddy Gaston, is his name really Gaston? Gaston, like, uh, what's the, is that in Beauty and the Beast? Gaston! He started adding in other raw meats such as cow kidneys and ground camel. Where the f*** are you getting ground camel, bro? Also, you could apparently buy ground camel in the United States, who knew? Yes. <laughs> Why? Is, why? Why? There's perfectly good other ground meats. Why do we need to be grinding up camels? Where the f 
Where do you get camels from? Sir, where would I get a camel? I will provide. Admittedly, the guy clearly had a good sense of humor about what he was doing. Not only are his t-shirts and his deadpan commitment to the idea of big rotisserie pretty funny, but in one video description, he even wrote that he was his his experiment was either going to win him a Nobel Prize or a Darwin Award. <laughs> But while this Instagram account was largely being treated as a joke and then as a means to advertise merch, it was still promoting the idea that eating raw meat is in no way unsafe. Wait, is that what he's saying? I don't think he's saying that at all. He's like, yo, this could kill me. I could get a Darwin Award for this. Or I'm going to get a tummy ache. I don't think he's saying it's safe. The concept of until I get a tummy ache is subjective, and we also have no idea what was happening off camera. Gaston claims not to have gotten sick or have had any diarrhea, but there's no way to verify whether or not that's actually true. All he had to do was literally hold his together for one minute each day while he made his video. And usually, he was only visible from the waist up, so for all he know, he was actually sh**ing his pants while filming. Whoever's filming it be like, Gaston, you gotta stop, Gaston! We also don't have any idea what precautions he was taking with his meat. If you go to the supermarket, buy fresh chicken breast, and eat it raw every day for 100 days, you're gonna have a bad time. But if you buy a bunch of chicken breasts, freeze them at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit or colder, and leave them frozen solid at that temperature for at least 15 days, there's a reasonable chance that any bacteria and parasites could be killed. However, as the USDA makes clear, this is not completely reliable when done in your home freezer, and they absolutely recommend cooking food rather than freezing it to make itself safe for consumption. It's ridiculous that the FDA needs to point that out. Yeah, no, no, no. It would be best if you cooked your chicken population. <laughs> Just for fuck's sake, why do, we, why do we live in this world? <laughs> of course, if any precautions like freezing the meat were being taken, none of that is mentioned in any of these videos. Dude just ate raw chicken a hundred times and claimed not to get a tummy ache. Hell, by day 10, he even stopped telling people, don't try this at home. But a hundred days and half a million followers later, the experiment was completed and Gaston has successfully avoided getting sick from eating raw meat. As far as we know, nothing about this was scientifically rigorous, and it wasn't even a great promotion for the carnivore diet since he rated all of his meals at about a 3 out of 10 in terms of taste. Dude, just eating raw chicken breast is so slimy and weird. He described the cow kidney he ate as tasting like licking the floor of the men's bathroom in a shitty dive bar. Not really a great sales pitch. The experiment may have ended by the time of writing, Gaston is now on six days of his new challenge. A hundred days of eating raw cow testicles for science. No, he's not, bro. Gaston's a mad lad. Unfortunately, that brings our lighthearted fluff to an end. I hope you had plenty of laughs in there, Simon, because I'm about to ruin your f***ing day. Ah! Dubai porta potties. Ah! Back in the introduction, I briefly touched upon the concept of impossible beauty standards and people faking lives of luxury. There has never been anything on Instagram that exemplified this better than the Dubai porta potties. If you spend time scrolling around Instagram, you'll see pictures of models with hundreds of thousands of followers hanging around in amazing and exotic locations. However, it's rarely clear how the f these people actually afford anything. It's prostitution, isn't it? Or sex work? Sorry. Like sex works, the word I'm supposed to say these days. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's a process. Uh, it's it's sex work. No, that's what it is, right? <laughs> it's not like they're getting sponsored by Magic Spoon. <laughs> Despite being attractive, these models will often not have any ties to a modeling agency. Even though they're showing off their luxurious hotel stay and gourmet meals, none of the boats are sponsored by the hotels or restaurants, or any other companies for that matter. So how is that even possible? Sex work, Kevin. It's sex work. Unless they're a Nepo baby, how could these Instagram model models have afforded all of these expensive trips and accommodation if they don't appear to have any day job or source of income from their social media presence? Can you imagine defending it being like, No, 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 I'm a Nepo baby. I'm not doing sex work. I'm a Nepo baby. There's often one big clue in their profile, which is some form of personal contact information that can be used for bookings. <laughs> now look, I'm certainly not here to disparage sex workers. Blowjobs are real jobs. Sentence I never thought I'd fucking read. However, if you saw one of these seemingly unemployed models posting from a fabulous hotel in Dubai, I've got some unfortunate news for you about how she probably got there. Though the posts on Instagram would claim to be an impromptu girls' trip just to get away from the hustle and bustle of, well, of absolutely nothing based on all their other posts, Instagram is all about only showing people what you want them to see. The trips these women took were usually paid for by Middle Eastern men, and the women uh, were known as Dubai porta potties. That's disgusting. Have you ever figured out what coprophilia is yet, Simon? Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't even want to say, but is this going to involve like Cleveland steamers? 
This practice of importing sex workers has existed for years, though as far as I can tell, this specific variant didn't start gaining public attention until somewhere around 2015, with the story really blowing up in 2018. Instagram models would be flown out to Dubai at a rate of roughly $30,000 for three to four days, though the exact price would depend on how good their negotiating skills were. They would then be used in every horrible way imaginable, far exceeding what would be expected of regular sex work. Oh my god, I don't like it. But by far the most common request from the men was to shit on the women's chest or in their mouths. <laughs> Hence the title of Dubai Portable. This reads like it can't be real. Like, I absolutely believe the sex work part, but I don't... This seems like so absurd that it, like, is there evidence of this? I guess people could be like, yeah, that's what was happening. <laughs> Now, what's going on in the world? Why? I don't know. A lot of this was exposed by the now defunct website called Tag the Sponsor. Whoever ran the website had some serious grudge against these models for what he deemed to be deceit about their lives. He wanted to expose these women and show who the real sponsors of these fantastic vacations really were. I mean, I kind of get it because it's like if you're deceiving people into like it, it feels like you're adding to that Instagram, that part of Instagram that makes everyone hate their lives. Because they're like, you know, at the desk at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday in a cubicle in Chicago. I don't know why I chose Chicago. While these other people are like halfway around the world saying that they're just having that living their best lives. And it's like, yeah, but then someone's taking a shit in their mouth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I could understand the anger if the site was run by someone whose daughter's mental health was destroyed by Instagram or something, but realistically, it was probably just some woman hating incel. The site featured a mix of content, with some of it revealing the actual conversations between the models and their sponsors. I'm willing to come to the bites and, and I will let Mr. Lick the rooms of my feet. In some case, how are they how are they getting hold of this? In some cases, there were even pictures and videos of things that have transpired. Okay, that, that's how we know it happens. But how did you get a hold of this? Other sources have featured anonymous testimonials from women who took part in these arrangements. So between those and the videos, we know that this is something that was really happening. F no. Why? However, most of the content on the website I mentioned was created by trolls. It was people creating Instagram accounts to pose as wealthy foreigners who were offering the women these incredible trips in exchange for vile and disgusting things. And a big part of this ruse was making them send a video in which they verbally agreed to the terms of the arrangement. Admittedly, some of these videos are kind of funny. Even if the content is unsavory, it's hard not to find a little humor in a woman recording herself on a treadmill in the gym while casually giving verbal consent to sexual acts including coprophilia in exchange for $40,000. Ah. Uh, Dude. Ah. But that was one of the tamer consent videos that was featured. In addition to women agreeing to eat shit. What? There were also videos in which they agreed to do things like masturbate the sponsor's camel. What is going on? <laughs> what the f have sex with their 13-year-old nephew? What the f dude? I will also um uh his vision brother who is 13 years old. Even if a lot of the content posted to the site was created by trolls who were not making real offers, the conversations with the women showed that this was nothing new to any of them. Yet, the people doing it, like seeking these might be trolls, but the women who are saying like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wank off your camel and, and f*** your 13 year old nephew, that is real. That is someone thinking that that is what they're going to do. Ah. Uh... Most of them confessed having been flown to Dubai before for similar acts, and there was no bizarre request made by the trolls that hadn't already appeared in genuine videos and testimonials from Instagram models who had previously engaged in these activities. The camel thing wasn't particularly common, although there were more than a few dogs involved, but requests for the models to turn the sponsor's young sons or nephews into men absolutely were common. At the end of the day, I'm not sure what the darkest part of this story is. You might think it's all the poop or camels, but what I find personally more disturbing is how mundane and transactional it all seemed. One woman stated that after the third time someone takes a dump on your chest, you just get used to it. What? And at tens of thousands of dollars per trip, maybe you do. But the fact that the models treated these disgusting and often illegal acts as completely banal probably isn't the darkest aspect either. I'd say the darkest part of this story is the effect that these Instagram models had on impressionable girls. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We already mentioned how damaging Instagram is to young people's mental health, and seeing all these beautiful women live in extraordinary lives of luxury and privilege created beyond unrealistic expectations. Perhaps if the models had been more upfront about the cost they had to pay in order to live that life, people might not have found it so aspirational and thus psychologically damaging. Yeah, that's the argument that I made for the dude who started the website. Because it's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're making this sound like, you know, everything's great. And then someone takes a sh in your mouth. 
<laughs> Christ. But on the bright side, at least everyone involved in these adventures, both the models and the men hiring them, were tested for STDs before anything went down. Yeah, and to be fair, I was- oh, Jesus Christ, I was about to say, it's two things going on between two consenting adults, but then there was the 13-year-old nephew. Fuck. Dude, what the f of course, I can only verify that this happens with the people, not the camels. Jojo Sai! We're going to end today's episode with a bit of an unsolved mystery about the Instagram user by the name of Jojo Sai 1012. Jojo was a young woman from Shanghai, but that's really all is known about her. Her exact age and real name are completely unknown. All that is known is what appeared on her Instagram account. Jojo opened her account in December of 2013. If my interpretation of Google translations are to be believed, she was involved in a serious relationship with a man roughly her age who didn't live in the same city as her or who traveled a lot for work. It's not totally clear, but a meaningful portion of their relationship seems to have been long distance. And when they were together, they frequently appeared to be in fancy hotels. What is going on? <laughs> why is this? Why we so don't like it already? Overall, the account was a pretty mundane chronicling of Jojo and her boyfriend's relationship. Based on the places they were staying and eating, they certainly seemed to have a good deal of money. But beyond that, it was regular couple stuff. They would go out to eat, go to the movies, and cook together. It's just a couple of Nepo babies living their best life, please. They also frequently wore their matching pink bape jackets featuring baby Milo. What the fuck is a bape jacket featuring baby Milo? It sounds not nice. Beyond pictures together, Jojo would also post screenshots of their conversations. Again, some of it was mundane, some of it was more affectionate than probably needed to be shared with the world, and some of it was even them arguing. So, in that regard, I guess kudos for not setting unrealistic relationship goals for people. For the first four months that Jojo's account existed, the content was almost entirely like this. Occasionally, Jojo would post photos unrelated to her boyfriends, like her watching anime or taking a milk bath, but it was mostly about their relationship. I so... I wonder about this, like... I don't know where, like, uh, hmm, hmm. So I don't post anything on Instagram. I don't I don't share details of my personal life, but I feel my personal life's pretty great. Like my life's pretty dope. Like I get to do something I love. My personal life's also really nice. I got like nice family. Got like good shit. <laughs> you know? But I feel if I boast it, people be like, oh it's such a sanitized version of Simon's life, and I'd be like, no, 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 my life's pretty dope. <laughs> and now people are gonna be like, Simon, your life isn't that dope. And I'll be like, yeah, but it is. And I'm really grateful. Like I, I, it's it's great. Like, I'm really happy that this is this is this is this is me. Shit. However, that all changed on February the 22nd, 2014. It seems that Jojo and her boyfriend had spent the previous night together, but on the 22nd, Jojo woke up single. The posts in the days that follow were a mix of self-loathing, saying what a piece of shit her ex was, and talking about how her next man would be better. She was even clearly out there dating, as she shared an image of a receipt with her Instagram followers. Jojo had gone out with a wealthy man who spent 4.28 million won on wine. That's like five hundred and eighty thousand dollars. What the f and she said that the wine was shit. Oh dude. To be clear, there had been a picture of Jojo and her ex being perfectly happy eating a McDonald's, so I'm pretty sure her point wasn't that the guy should have spent more money on her, it's just that he was throwing money around like an idiot to show off without even knowing how to pick a decent bottle of wine. Regardless, more than anything, Jojo's posts were about being unhappy and heartbroken. On March the 4th, she began posting pictures while wearing a bandage over one eye, which she said was due to an eye injury. <laughs> That's why you'd wear a bandage over an eye, isn't it, Jojo? There's a lot of speculation that she injured her eye from crying too much, though unless she managed to burst a blood vessel in one eye, that seems unlikely. Yet, how would you ever talk to someone that's like, oh, what happened to your eye? Oh, I was just crying a lot. And my eye got bruised. 
Either way, the following day is when things started taking a dark turn. On March the 5th, JoJo posted a bunch of screenshots of conversations with her ex, though the final one was the most important. The screenshot showed her ex asking her to pick a name for their son, with her choosing the name Li Feng. He then said to pick a name with four characters, so she went with Lexus. Uh, one, two, three, four, five characters. Four, what? Is it? But <laughs> I don't understand. Oh. It was the sort of thing that she would have posted when they were together, but her comment on the photo gave more context as to why she was doing it now. Jojo talked about how she'd been trying to be happy, how she was seeing other men who were richer and better looking than her ex, but none of that made her happy. She would try to convince herself that she was happy and fake her way through sex, but all she could think of was how she would never love anyone the way she loved him. And more importantly, that even though she loved him so deeply, his feelings were all a lie. She ended by saying, if you don't want to have a baby with me at all, why do you still ask me to name it? He said that if his mother doesn't agree to our marriage, he will have a lifelong relationship with me and wait until we're old to get married. This is really the most romantic love talk I have ever heard in my life, but it is also a lie. I can't forget any of this. I can't forget it unless I die. What is going on? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of lost. What is happening? First of all, Jojo saying, if my mother doesn't like you, then we can't get married until she dies is not terribly romantic. But I guess the whole I can't forget it unless I die is the most important part. Over the next two days, 13 more images were posted to Instagram. Most were selfies of Jojo with various foreboding comments such as, don't forget the good times we had and I will haunt you day and night after I am dead. Oh my god, is she gonna kill herself? Kevin, I don't like it. I want to just go back to the in the mouths, Kevin. Admittedly, one of these is much more foreboding than the other. After all the selfies, there was an image of her ex with the words, I never thought you'd deceive me, but I still love you. Now, that's all a bit sad, but it was the final three images that really got people's attention. The first showed JoJo's bed in flames, along with the distinctive baby Milo jacket and a number of her other possessions, presumably everything given to her by her ex. The final picture uploaded was another image of the bed on fire, but in between them was a picture of JoJo's legs dangling out of the window, showing that it was several story dropped to the roof below her and several stories more all the way to the ground if she were to miss. And that was the last time JoJo's account was ever updated. The implication of what happened is pretty clear. But was any of it real? Well, we don't know. The day after JoJo's final post, a user on a Chinese message board claimed to live in the same building as JoJo and said that the girl really did end her life. People saying things on the internet doesn't make them true, but the user did provide a photo of police investigating the discovery of a girl's body on a roof that looked very similar to the one beneath JoJo's window. Oh my god, this is so intense. Beyond that, the only potential evidence of her death is that Jojo Psy 1012 is now officially a memorial account, something that requires manual verification by Instagram staff. Well, there we go. That's pretty much confirmed then. Of course, they may have used one of the news articles that was written based on speculation as sufficient proof of death to memorialize the account. Wait, that no, they, they, surely they need a death certificate, a scan of a death certificate. Come on. Surely. Since Jojo's real name is unknown, we'll unfortunately never know. However, there is one weird thing that I noticed while researching this. Jojo's account is reported as being completely untouched since 2014. The ability to memorialize accounts was added in 2020, and once that happens to an account, nobody can log in or change anything. I mentioned before that there were two pictures of Jojo's bed on fire, which was true, and that remained true at least until January 2019. However, on her current memorialized account, the first of those fire pictures is gone. The Wayback Machine's a bit wonky with sites like Instagram, so I can't pinpoint when the account account was memorialized or when that picture was removed, but it is a bit weird. It suggests that at some point, five years ago after JoJo's alleged death, somebody logged into the Instagram account to delete one and only one specific picture. But who would have done this and why? We'll probably never know. What a mystery. Gee, Simon, that sure was a dark but entertaining Instagram mystery, huh? <laughs> oh my god, it made me forget all about the camels and coprophilia. No, it didn't. I still think about those camels. Jesus Christ, Kevin. Thanks for watching. They're, they're, they're making this sound like, you know, everything's great and then someone takes a sh in your mouth.